What's up, everyone, and welcome back to Ask Devin Anything, the show where you get to ask Devin anything. Weird, right? And so uh, my name is Devin, and I'm the visionary, for those of you that do not know, of Burn Bootcamp and Burn Media Company. And we're going to the moon here at Burn Bootcamp. We're uh, at 350-something locations and rocking and rolling. And most of our questions come from our members, like the three that we have today. But every episode, I'll do three questions. And it's your opportunity to connect with me. I like to think about this as a mentorship. We get to sit down, we get to talk to each other one-on-one. And if you're uh, asking any of these questions, uh, then this is gonna be useful to you. So we have three of them today. First one is from Dr. Rick. Dr. Rick out of Orem, Utah asks, you're on the road a lot, Devin, aren't you? So am I. Uh, What are some tips that you have for me as I travel? Um, Dr. Rick also says, that he's uh, 62 years old, all right, and um, you know finds his finds himself like stuck in his nutritional ways, and just needs some like like some practical tips. So this will be one where I don't get so philosophical and esoteric. I'm just going to give you some straight hardcore nutrition tips for when you travel. Number two, this comes from Rose at Cedar Park, Texas. Okay, she said, Devin, I heard the. Uh, Ant, uh, animal versus plant protein clip that you guys did. I think what you mean, and we'll hook it. We'll hook it up here. Is the Ask Devin Anything where we talked about animal and, and plant protein and the differences between the two? We did a whole episode on protein. I'll hook that here too, uh, Rose, so that you guys can easily get there. Make sure we do that Tuesday. And then what we're also going to do uh, is explain, explain just a little bit deeper. Or, not into protein, but deeper into macronutrients. She says, what are macros exactly and why are they important? Okay, I talk, she knows that protein's important, but why macros? So I'm just gonna do a basic, very basic, what are macronutrients 101 for those of you who are wondering. And last but not least, I got my girl Deidre out of Portland, Oregon. And she asks, Devin, you talk a lot about the psychology of fitness. Sometimes it's hard for me to make time for myself. So my question for you is how do I make time for fitness? All right, Deidre, we're gonna cover that for you. These are three amazing questions. Before I move on, you gotta make sure that you subscribe on that. Uh, wait, are we flexing on the subscribe button or are we subscribing on the flex button? We're subscribing, we're flexing on the subscribe button. <laughs> All right, and you know Morgan's coming at you every Monday with some fired up stuff. We got trainer talks coming out. We got Ask Devin Anything, a whole lineup, Coffee with the Clients, a whole lineup now on the podcast that you guys should be very interested in because this is the mental, emotional, spiritual reps that you get to take outside of the gym. All right, we're not just... We're not just a company that's gonna work you out and make you uh, make you sweat. We'll make you sweat mentally too, okay? So let's get into it. Number one, Dr. Rick uh, asks, DK, I'm on the road a lot. I'm 62, man. Give me some trips for my travel time. All right, I'm gonna go very practical, Dr. Rick. Are you ready for this? Number one, you gotta stay in a hotel that's as close as possible to Chipotle. That's number one. All right, double chicken, or if you're getting a little crazy, you go single chicken, single beef. I only white rice, you could do brown rice. I gotta get my greens in, so I'll throw some lettuce in there, and then I like to do just a little bit. I don't do dairy a lot, but when on the road, make the food healthy and taste good. I do a little sour cream and a little bit of queso. Like, like you know how they take out the big spoon? Like I'm talking like 1 16th of those things. I mix it in together. And that's it, that's my, that's my protein, that's my main meal when I'm on the road. Okay, let's say that there's no Chipotle and you're traveling you know, somewhere crazy, but there is a Starbucks, okay? Because there's a lot more Starbucks than there are Chipotles. My second is I'll go the egg white bites. They're one for one on protein and carbohydrates, and, but they are packed with protein, okay? So I'm just, and you can ask uh, anybody that I'm around when we're in the gyms and we're traveling, we're out in the country um, going from gym to gym, you will not find me without an empty Starbucks egg whites bag. And for all of you critics out there that want to talk to me about how the egg souve egg whites and Starbucks have bad ingredients, well, guess what? I know for a fact that it is much better than a cheeseburger from McDonald's. So we need to give our grace, ourselves grace, Dr. Rick, when we're on the road. We need to realize that 
you're doing the very best that you can when you're on the road to nourish yourself and to stay on track. And you know, so for people that travel often, you get this. For people that don't travel often, you need to travel more. That way you can have empathy with those people that travel you know, for a living like myself. I'm somewhere every week. So if I don't have these two things, the next the layer would be whole foods, true foods, you know, some hot bars that I, that I locate here, get this, prior to going on the trip. Anticipation is power. Okay, I think we talked about that in one of the last Ask Devin Anything episodes. Anticipation is power. You gotta know when you're traveling and know what's around. And if you're fortunate enough like I am to have an assistant, then you need to just make sure that that person that's helping you out with your schedule, if you're a professional, like Dr. Rick, I know you probably have an assistant that's gonna help you. You gotta relate to them with clarity the goals that you have on the road and let them know what success would look like to you if they were to build you an itinerary on the road that had some food built in. Okay, so it's Chipotle and Starbucks, my number one, my number two. All right, my number three is, uh, my number three is actually going to be, or my number, my number two actually is the Whole Foods of the world, the hot bars of the world where you can stop and just get a, a great meal. And then lastly, it's like the gas stations because the gas stations are everywhere. And when Zay and I are on the road, like we travel, we go, we're going places. Like, you know, we're not gonna be famous out here and, and impact millions of people's lives if we're just sitting at home behind the computer. We need to get out, we need to shake your hand and hug you and high five you and touch you and train you and all those great things. Well, we're driving from location to location and sometimes we're driving on a stretch that's like from the boonies to the boonies, right? So in the way, there's only like one gas station and you get to stop there and they might have like a pack of nuts or maybe some you know freshly fit, uh, picked fruit. I've even been known to, although it's off my pro, like my standard protocol, if I'm in a bind and I need the protein, I'm getting like one of those muscle milk proteins just to hold me over, guys. Now, I'm not gonna be one of those people that's like, you need to never eat things that have any syn synthetic or anything, you know. It's like, yeah, okay, I get it. But you're the same person talking to me about the plastic BPA in the, you know, container that I'm cooking my grass-fed ground beef and organic white rice in. Meanwhile, you're going through the drive through every other day at McDonald's and you're getting like a fish fillet, fish fillet sandwich that is like made with like, I don't even sure if they make those with fish anymore. It's like, so, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to tell other people how to clean their car, you must have your car first clean. Follow what I'm saying? So, Dr. Rick, you're gonna have to battle that, buddy. You have to battle some of the some of that. Um, well, that thing's not healthy, and this thing's not healthy, and suve egg white bites have this ingredient in it, and blah 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 blah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it, but I'm out here really doing this and really traveling, and you have to be able to be practical. You can't be so ideological that it eliminates practicality, my friend. Okay. Lastly, here's another tip. I actually have a travel bag, Dr. Rick. Here's what it has in it. It has Ignite. It has replenish. It has my single serve proteins. I actually fill up two shaker cups full of protein um, in plastic bags. That way, I can take the plastic bag out, set it aside, and then like, you know, I'm like a hotel chef at this point, right? So I basically will use like hotel water and my protein, and I'll shake it up, and I'll get 100 grams that way if I have to. So I take plenty of protein on the road. Um, I also take my Shackley Vitalizer packs. Those are my multivitamins. They have women and men's. Uh, the Shackley Company is my favorite. And I put all that stuff into a travel bag. I have three travel bags loaded at all times. That way I can screw up twice and forget to make one and still have a backup travel bag. That way I can just grab and go and grab and go and grab and go. And finally, my last tip to staying healthy on the road, and this is going to feed over into your food, but is actually just a routine tip. Just try your very best and don't judge yourself when you do try. But tr try your very best the majority of the time to rise at the same time and to go to sleep at the same time on the road so that way you're not necessarily breaking that circadian rhythm that, that you know, which is tougher when you're traveling from coast to coast, which is why it's very important for you to um, really have routines in your life that are both um, as close as they possibly could be together on the road and at home. But obviously on the road, you're gonna have to make some adjustments and uh, I can help you through that in, excuse me, in the future. All right, Dr. Rick, you got that one, buddy? 
man, I appreciate you. Um, I've actually trained you before out at, at, in Orem, and you do a, you do a fantastic job out there. Thank you for all you do for the Orem community. Um, I'll be on the front lines of health. You continue to be on the other side, on the, on the back lines, and we're going to continue to fight together, my buddy. All right, that's it. You're on the road a lot. Best tips for travel. That's them right there. So if you learn something, pay it forward. Okay, pay it forward. Go ahead and maybe like send like a friend uh, some of these tips that I just talked about and invite them to the show. Invite them to just come in and listen. I, I covered three random, like not necessarily random. They're all in, they're all in like life and fitness and family and business, but of a why that's a wide scope of things. So a wide variety of topics that we cover. I cover three individual questions from the audience every single episode. I get a little long-winded sometimes, so it goes over 30 minutes, but you know it's because I'm passionate and I really care about you and I want you to reach your goals. I'm not asking you for anything. I'm not selling you anything at the end of this. If you want to come to Burn, come to Burn. All right. If you're ready, you'll be ready. If you want to buy a franchise, you get to come buy a franchise. But I'm not here to sell you anything. My job at this stage of the game is impact. I want to help you. I want to help you achieve all the things that you never thought you could achieve. And that achievement, your achievement, is my oxygen. So if you've made some good achievements at Burn or because of this podcast, make sure you leave a review and let your boy know. Okay, question number two. What are macros exactly? Why are they important? And this is from Rose in Cedar Park, Texas. Rose, let's go right into this, my friend. Um, I'm inferring that you're probably a newer member, somebody that's just getting introduced to what what the word macronutrient even means it could sound like spanish or you know some like you know some gibberish or science to you uh, but it's actually very a very practical thing so calories are a unit of energy but let me start here let me start this would be a good way to unpack it a diet if you look up the definition in the dictionary of diet what it means is a habitual consumption of food by a living organism keyword being habitual Eh, the diets nowadays, not so habitual, are they? You know, uh, given that there's been, uh, since in the last 92 years, via my research, 102 mainstream diets in the last 90 something years. Okay? Not so, it's not so like concrete. It's not so habitual. Okay? So, what does habitual mean? Obviously, it means doing the same thing over and over and over in a pattern that's really hard to break. So, clearly, our idea of nourishment and, and diet are at odds with each other. And so, I'm going to say, it's not a diet, it's your nourishment. Okay, what are the nutrients you're putting into your body? Okay, well, now we have to say, what is nourishment? Well, nourishment is energy, isn't it? Okay, then what is energy? Energy is calories. That's how we measure energy for the human body. So, a calorie is a unit of energy that is actually made up by three things. A carbohydrate, a fat, and a protein. These three things are called macronutrients. They make up a calorie. Okay, macronutrients make up calories and micronutrients, micronutrients are vitamins, minerals, heavy metals, iron, zinc, calcium, all these things that you hear about that are non-caloric and that be, might be vitamin based, let's say, as a simple definition. Okay, remember I talked about like protein in a really deep way on an Ask Devin Anything episode. We're going to link that here for you. It really goes deep into animal versus plant protein, what the differences are, why I believe that you need them both, okay, to be a well-rounded, healthy individual. But that's not the topic for today. The topic is what are macros exactly, okay? So macros equal calories, okay? And uh, macros are proteins, they're fats, and they're carbs. Now, follow me on this one. Protein... Okay, carbs both have per gram four calories per gram. Okay, four calories per gram. Fats have nine calories per gram. So how do you get to calories, a calorie total? You're going to take the amount of protein that you take in one day, ingest in one day, you're going to times that by four. You're going to take the amount of carbohydrates that you intake in one day, and you're gonna times that by four, and then you're going to take the amount of fats that you take in in one day, and you're gonna times that by nine. You're gonna add those three numbers up, and that is going to be your calories. That's gonna be the calories, okay, that you intake every single day. Now, it is 
a science, and people could argue with me all day long because of the nutrition wars and the diet wars and the calories and the macro wars and your way is wrong versus my way that's right. And it's like, ah, it's like, okay, I'm going to take the, I'm going to take the scientific, I'm going to take the rationale route on this because it has been studied, okay, um, that a deficit, a caloric deficit is necessary to change your composition and a caloric surplus changes your composition. Now it doesn't necessarily how, say how it changes your composition, but if you eat too many calories, you're going to gain body weight and if you eat not enough calories, then you're going to lose body weight. When I say composition, what I mean is, well, what exactly are we losing? Because there's really two main tissues that we lose and gain based on food. Okay, you gain muscle tissue uh, or fat tissue based on food. Do you gain bone density based on food? Arguably, over a long period of time, your micronutrients, calci calcium can create more dense bones and you know, there's an argument to be made there. All right, things like that. But I'm, I'm speaking about, okay, what is our body composition? How it is made, of, most people think about it is, how much lean visceral muscle mass do I have? And then what type of fat or fatty tissue or adipose tissue do I have? It's not taking into consideration the weight of your lungs and the weight of your teeth and the weight of your hair and all these other things that macronutrients and micronutrients affect. They do affect. Okay, but I'm going to stay in this kind of simple 101 chain and we're going to say, we're going to say, how does the manipulation of protein, calories, excuse me, proteins, carbs, and fats, how does the manipulation of these equal body composition? Okay, so if I take more protein in, I'm going to be more prone to building muscle. Okay, if I take less protein and I'm less pro, uh, prone to building muscle. If I take more carbohydrates in, okay, uh, I'm going to be more prone. I'm be more prone to gaining body fat tissue. If I take more body fat and I'm be more uh, more fat calories in, I'm going to be more prone, okay, to especially if I'm in a surplus into adding uh, the negative competition composition or the body fat that we're not trying to add. So generally speaking, okay, protein, you're going to want to keep protein around times 1 to times 1.5 per body pound. Okay, same thing with carbs. You're going to go times maybe a little bit lower, 0.8 to 1.2. And then in your fats, you're going to go somewhere from 0.3 to 0.5 times your body weight. So if I'm trying to get my protein and I weigh 200 pounds, okay, generally speaking, I'm going to go 200 pounds times one um, gram of protein per body pound is going to be 200 grams of protein. I'm going to have 200 grams of carbohydrates, right? And then I'm going to have whatever 0.3 is times 200, okay? And then I'm going to have that in fat. So I'm just trying to talk you through rows, a way to think about this, okay? And one other thing you're gonna, is that you're going to take your calories up against your total daily energy expenditure. Okay, this is very important. Everybody listen to this one. So you're going to take your total daily energy expenditure and that basically is going to be your basal metabolic rate, the calories that you burn just while you're doing normal everyday activity, all right? And then you're going to add your workouts and your work and all this stuff, that all this activity, all the activity, your total daily energy expenditure that's measured in calories. And then you're going to say, all right, I'm either going to want a deficit of 500 to lose about a pound a week or an increase of... Uh, a surplus of 500 if I'm looking to gain muscle mass. Now, generally speaking, Rose, that's exactly what you're going to do. And I'm going to stop right there because if you do it that way, um, reverse engineer it from how you actually live your life, and then you're going to say, oh, I work out when I have this like super demanding physical job. Well, then the calories that you need to eat in order to be at a 500 calorie deficit are much different than somebody would have to eat that doesn't do those things at all. Okay, so it's very important to have your total daily energy expenditure dialed in. Go to the internet, type in TDEE. -E. You should get a, at least a somewhat reliable, given that you're entering the information appropriately, a somewhat reliable answer. And then you can start by subtracting 500 for most of us that are trying to uh, lose some body fat. And for those of us that are trying to gain or gain muscle, you can add 500. Does that make sense, Rose? Okay. All right, well, that's a great question. And that's just a little 101 on what are macros exactly and why are they important? Why are they important? Macros are important because they're what makes up a unit of energy for your body, which is a calorie. Calories are important because they're going to be what 
um, creates a surplus or a deficit so that you can then actually dictate and target what type of tissue that you are trying to create in your body. If you're gonna eat a surplus of fats and carbs and you're gonna eat a surplus of calories, you better believe then you're gonna be adding fatty tissue. If you're at a appropriate amount of protein, maybe a surplus, and you're at an appropriate amount of carbs and your appropriate amount of fat, okay, then you're gonna likely be gaining muscle. Should you be lifting and training hardcore, all right, and doing what we call demanding workouts, not exercise, not activity. I'm talking about demanding workouts. Things are gonna demand more of you than you could ever demand of yourself. That is what's going to activate protein synthesis, which basically puts all these macronutrients to their highest and best use. Thanks, Rose, for your question. Hope you got something from that. All right, as I take a little break here to drink my Replenish, sponsored by Defiance Fuel. I'm just kidding. <laughs> None of this stuff is sponsored. It is uh, it is good, though. It's delicious. And uh, Defiance Fuel is a company that um, Morgan and I invested in early on. We love what they do. It's premium structured water. They have uh, added uh, minerals and electrolytes to help mimic the... Uh, the, the human anatomy and everything that we need. And then we put Replenish. We created a, a product called Replenish, which is our intro workout um, that uh, has all the major electrolytes that you need to restore what you're sweating. And I talk a lot nowadays, so I need to take little water breaks here and there. Mm, that's tasty. Okay, let's do number three. Let's do number three. That's, a sh that's my shameless plug for the day. Listen, like I said, I have nothing to sell you. I don't care if you buy it or not. I'm just saying that you do need some intra workout, and I know exactly where this comes from. It comes right from the labs that I've got my eyes on, and if you know anything about me, then I hold my integrity to the highest regard, and that integrity means that I know that there is crappy ingredients and products out there that if you, I don't go create something for you that that is on the back of our relationship and you trusting me to go out and do all the research and only bring you back those products and those services that are gonna be for the highest highest possible greater good that, that, that uh, if I ever move or shake in an opposite way of what I've just explained, y'all can fire me, okay? Because that's never gonna happen. Okay, let's go to the third and final question for the day, everybody. Hope you're enjoying yourself and I hope that you're learning something on these. If you are, please subscribe, leave a review, just write some nice things about me. It actually makes me feel so good and valuable and just like I'm doing a good job. And everybody, everybody wants to do a good job. No one wants to suck at their job, so at least, at least pretend for now, like build your boy up, will you? All right, hey listen, hey, uh, how do I make time for fitness? Deidre asked from Portland, Oregon. Man, this is a good question. Um, I'm gonna actually use my book for this one because I wanna actually read you a couple uh, pages from it because I talk about something called the 168 hour rule. And I do this exercise every year and I still do it this year even though I wrote this book in 2018. Uh, it's called the 168 hour rule. That means you all have 168 hours in every single week and we are gonna do what's called the time bucket exercise right here, right now, live on Ask Devin Anything. So, if you have the Stop Starting Over book and you're chilling and you got access to it, breakout page number 220. Uh, otherwise, you can listen along and I'll read from the book, but I'll also ask, answer Deidre's uh, question in the middle. But I have to preface it by saying this. Such a good question. You know why? Because she said, she didn't say, Hey Devin, I'm not a fitness person. Like, how do I ever get into fitness? She's, that's a bad question. She said, how do I make time for fitness? That means there's a pre-assumption there that she's assuming that she has the time. She's assuming that it's important. She's confused at how she can manage and organize her schedule in order to create the time necessary because she can't quite find it today. Sound familiar? Good question because it's pre-assuming that there's, a, there's an answer. Some people might ask it this way, which would be a bad question. There's never any time for myself, what do I do? Well, you've already, you've already answered the question that you're asking. You said there is never any time, so how could I possibly make time for you if you don't believe that, that you are served by time, okay, and that you don't serve time? Time serves you, you don't serve time. 
That's a very important distinction, right? I had somebody come in and say, hey, Devin, it's 6.30 p.m. You should wrap up the meeting. It's getting late. The meeting's not done. Meeting ain't done yet. Like we, ha- we still have more to meet. I, the, the time doesn't tell me when the meeting's done. The outcome tells me when the meeting's done. So the meeting might be done at 5.42 if we're going to 6.30 or it might be done at you know, 2 p.m. the next day. But time is serving me and my outcomes. And when you have this mentality, then you'll ask questions in the way that Deidre is asking a question. And I wanted to talk about this because so many people will frame questions in the negative and you're not even giving yourself an opportunity because of the language patterns that you've been conditioned to use. You're not even giving yourself an opportunity to get an answer. You're cutting yourself from all possibilities before you even get to a probability. And there is no, poss- there is no probability if there's no possibility. That's why I say in all of my content that the inner world is three things, attitude, effort, and belief. And it's how you uh, ask questions, it's how I can best read your fundamental beliefs in life, how you ask me questions. Be very, I want you to, I'm gonna say that again. I know about you more than you know about you oftentimes by the way that you ask questions, by the way that you are posing your questions. Deidre says, how do I make time for fitness? Someone else might say, there's never time for fitness. Can you please help me? Very, very important. Okay, so I'm gonna break out my book and if you guys want to, you can. Uh, you can go ahead and turn to page 220, all right? And this is going to be out of the 12th chapter called Overcoming Objections. This is the chapter uh, for example, ch- uh, objection one is I've tried everything, right? These are all the excuses that I've heard. Although rational and although justified f- have, fun- have fundamental flaws in them that I like to address in the book. So that's my favorite one is I've tried everything. So it's like, hmm, really? Everything? Hmm. Tell me 10. Well, you know, this one time I tried to go to Planet Fitness and, you know, nobody was holding me accountable, so I never went. And Okay, now tell me another time. Well, Okay, let me think, well, Susie back in 94 tried to get me to do the Atkins diet, hmm, and you know what? I can't really think of any other times outside of that. So you mean two, so you've tried two things, not everything. So there is hope, there is light, because there's all these strategies that we've never tried before. Objection number two is not enough energy. Guys, guys, let's go, I'm gonna nip this one in the butt right now. If you say that you don't have enough energy, okay, you might not like me for this statement. If you have energy to walk from your couch to the refrigerator to stuff your face, you have energy to put yourself through a workout. You might say, oh, I'm like dragging myself around. Good, great, awesome, drag yourself into the gym. You cannot say I don't have enough energy to work out. That is, a, that is not the truth. That is not true. You have the energy to go to the cupboard. You have the energy to get in your car and go drive somewhere else, just drive to the gym. It is a decision that you get to make. It is not, it is not an excuse you're allowed to have of I don't have enough energy. Like, let's be brutally honest. Like, honestly, that's a ridiculous thought pattern. It's like saying, I wanna make money, but I don't wanna work. I want to make the money, but I don't want to work. I want, you know, the only way to get the energy is to ignite the physiology and which that is, as we already know, if you know my theories, you know that the mind and the body connection is already there. You don't need to try hard. So if you just go ignite your physiology, you're going to ignite yourself mentally. You're going to have the energy afterwards. It is a facade that you're putting on. It's an excuse. It's like we have, we have two abundant resources inside us. And I really truly believe this. We have, we have two abundant resources that require zero skill uh, and require zero unique talent. You don't need to be born with anything and that's energy, energy and hustle. Energy and hustle because energy you know, em- comes from emotions. Emotions create motion. It's not that you're too tired to go you know, to work out, it's that you're not motivated by life. You don't have enough energy in your life. You don't have enough motion that creates emotion. Because if you have, oh, I got a good way. Okay, so you can go walk to the fridge, right? Okay, now if I put a gun to your head and I said, 
now go work out or I'm going to shoot you in the back of your head. You're going to go to the gym, right? Do you have energy to do that? Morbid example. I get it. I'm not trying to be morbid. It's not my philosophy. I'm not trying to like harm anybody. What I am trying to put forward is that it's not a matter of, it's, it's a matter of motivation. It's not a matter of talent or having it or not. It's a matter of motivation. You got a gun in your head. You're going to do a lot of things you didn't think that you could do when you're just sitting on the couch. So we got to get rid of this excuse that is unjustified of I don't have any energy. I will give maximum credit to people that are making uh, justified rational excuses like I have four kids, I have no money, I have you know, 15 places to take them every day and I have to work three jobs to, in order to keep the lights on. That, those are some rational excuses. We can still work with those things and we can still find you health and happiness and furthermore, finding your fitness and finding your health and happiness will help all those other things get better. But I cannot sit here and pretend that all excuses are made equal. All excuses are not made equal. You have it. You have it. You're just not motivated enough to do something about it. So it's a question of motivation, not skill. So energy and hustle, sometimes we just have to dig down. We have to pull them out. And it's like, the key ing ingredient to your transformation story is going to be your perseverance. Like, like when you don't have enough energy, when you're, when you're exhausted after the hard work that you were supposed to do is already done and then what's required of you is to do more hard work and then you execute, that's perseverance. And now we can get somewhere. I've gotten this notion over time um, that from, from my audience is that like two things, like people that, people that are either at rock bottom, like I used to be, or people at, are, uh, that, that are like doing very, very good things and are successful contributors to their community, to themselves and their families, like I am today. Like those are the two people I talk to. If you're in the middle somewhere and you're just looking for an out or you're like looking to like, gotcha Devin, like you've said this, but like that doesn't apply. And like, if you're looking to got me, or get me, like you're not gonna like me because I'm gonna give you like straightforward things that are gonna be like, you can't really argue with that. Like you can't argue with the fact that you, you, you think that you don't have energy to go work out when in fact I just illustrated how you have available energy inside of you. I'm gonna call you out on those excuses because those are not rationally justified valid excuses. Those are made up pretend facades that are going to keep you from your greatness. It has nothing to do with me and what I believe and me standing strong in my beliefs. That's gonna keep you from your greatness. I'm here for you. I'm here to eliminate that mindset, okay? So you can't have that objection. Okay, number three, and this is the one we're gonna get into in depth here in a moment, is time versus priorities. People say I don't have enough time to work out. That's a valid excuse. There's a lot of things going on in this world. Uh, number four is I'm not a fitness person. Hey, perspective, belief, conditioning from our parents, who we are, what we believe in, who we are, who we aren't. Oh, those are real things. Environment of um, epigenetics is what it's called. You are, you are who you are genetically based on the environment that you grew up and this is a new field of science that is blossoming like crazy. Number five, money's a problem. I got no money, DK. Well, that one's easy. Here it is. Run, go, right now, outside. Shoes are free, okay? We're gonna talk about the one um, running's free rather, shoes are not free, shoes are not free, shoes cost money, but we can run. Okay, we can talk about all of those other objections and there's, and we will, okay, and we will, and I don't mean to skim through them so fast, but I really want to make sure we dial in to objection number three, it is time versus priorities, okay, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to read this because I really want you to get the full 360 picture Deidre of what the 168 hour rule is, what the time buckets are, and what objection number three is and stop starting over and how I coach and train and mentor people to overcome this all the time. It's the classic time versus priorities. If you're not struggling this with your fitness routine, then I want you as I'm going through this, I want you to think about something else you're struggling in life that with that is that you're also using um, a, a justified uh, rationale process for not having enough time to do, okay? And the book reads, 
It's a classic story. I just don't have time to exercise. I have a hunch that you've heard someone utter this phrase before. This is by far the most common objection I hear. Rather than saying, I don't have enough energy, it's easier to say, I don't have time, right? Because you get to the point that the blame at everything is the very thing that consumes you. I'll come right out and say, it's never that you don't have time, it's always that you haven't made yourself a priority yet. Listen to that one more time. I'm gonna come out and say it. It's never that you don't have time. It's always that you haven't made yourself a priority yet. There's a pre-assumption to using the word haven't made yourself a priority yet that is very, very, very powerful because it is assuming that when you do make yourself a priority, therefore time is now available to you. So many of us allow our perceptions to control our behaviors. We live with the idea that we serve time and it does not serve us. Sound familiar? There's only so much time in the day is a poor excuse. It all comes down to how you prioritize your time. Think about the people in your life who are doing everything or they're perceived to do everything. Okay, there's time in the day. It's not a time problem, it's a priority problem. We all have the same opportunity with the same 24 hours. In actuality, not reality, because reality is some people's perception of the world and reality is very uh, subjective. In actuality, which is more objective, the reality, not your reality, you need to take control of time and command it. And I put command in quotes in the book, command it. Okay, to work for you. We know that when you ask better questions, you're gonna get better answers. If you ask the question, how do I work out when I don't have the time? That's a poor question, right? You're assuming that time controls your life. Ask yourself a better question, like when can I make the time to work out? This question assumes that you have the time, you simply have to leverage it appropriately. I never ask myself, why aren't there more hours in a day, but rather, how much can I accomplish in every hour of the day? Believing you don't have enough time is another way of saying your goal isn't that important to you. If I don't have time, it's not a priority. That means the goal isn't that important to me. It's not your priority. Do you realize that everything in your life that you want to manifest stops and starts with your ability and your strength to control yourself psychologically? Meaning, what goes on between your four walls, your attitude, your effort, and your belief are the very decisions that are going to control the psychology that ultimately determines how you synthesize the events that happen in your life and how you then turn those experiences and events into the way that you live your life in the future. Do you realize that everything manifests this way? Listen, when you are your number one priority, the book says you'll make the time to be healthy and happy by default. When you are your number one priority, what happens? People do this often. I, most, I mostly see number one as God, or number one as my friends, or number one as my daughter or my, or my son. And I'm not arguing that those things or your husband are not, or your wife are not important to you. I'm arguing that there can't be anything more important than you. Because if you don't exist, the perception of all of that other stuff goes away. If you don't exist, there is no such thing as faith to you personally. If, you don't, if you're not here, if you're, if you're nowhere to be found, how could there be anything without you? So therefore, your existence is the axiom to have anything else. That is the, what I believe deeply. I believe that the most important thing that you can do in, in your life is put yourself as the number one priority. The, the, do, you know, do you know why a bee lands on a flower? Think about that. Why does the bee land on the flower? Most times I ask this question, they'll say pollen, 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 pollen. No, it's nectar. Selfish. The bee lands on the flower to get the nectar. And ooh, listen to this. And as a byproduct, byproduct of that bee being selfish and going to get that sweet, sweet honey, the pollen is attached to the hair follicles of the bee and it germinates the world as it flies away and it releases that pollen through the air resistance and knocks it off in a beautiful fashion that germinates the world and gives us life gives us trees, gives us foliage that creates oxygen, that creates the ability to breathe. Without bees, there is no life, right? That's how important you being selfish is. That's how important you being selfish is. The bee does not understand germination. The bee understands feed my belly 
and good things will happen. Okay, so believing back to the book that you don't have enough time is another way of saying your goal is important and that's not your priority. When you are your number one priority, you are going to make the time to be healthy and happy by default. You'll get up 30 minutes earlier, you go to bed later, you're gonna trade 90 minutes of Facebook or your binge on Netflix for productive activities that create a maximized quality of life. You'll always have the time and I'll prove it to you if you're willing to take the following exercise serious. Now I'm going in to an exercise that I want you to carefully explore. It's called the 168 hours exercise. What will you do with them? Right now, we're gonna walk through this exercise that I've made part of my life. Putting this into practice has allowed me to clearly analyze my time and realize that I'm in full control. My mindset shifted from I only have an hour that's not enough time to I have an hour, how much can I get done? And when you flip that mentality, you're gonna open up your life to tons and tons and tons of possibilities. And if the probability of success is very, very low, well then you're gonna need a lot of possibility, you need a lot of potential outcomes, you need a lot of potential scenarios, and a lot of future prospect in your own life about you and what you can accomplish if you're gonna go out and chase success because the probability of success is so small that you're gonna need lots of possibilities. So if you don't think this way, you're never gonna even open yourself up to the world of the infinite possibilities that exist out there. Here's the exercise. To begin the exercise, take out your cell phone or on a piece of paper, write your notes, time buckets, okay? At the date, uh, and write the date at the top. Knowing that there are 168 hours in every week, I want you to take inventory of every hour and I want you to place these hours, or to place these um, hours in different categories. They're called buckets. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven buckets, okay? And I want you to go ahead and write these buckets down. Mission bucket, your job, your career, your school, your community, family bucket. These are dedicated hours you spend with your family, sitting in the living room, working on your laptop while they're you know, doing homework doesn't count. Leisure bucket, this includes socializing with friends, going out to dinner, sporting events, anything you do for fun with your friends, your eating bucket, your nourishment bucket. Right? Record the time you spend eating, meal, prep, meal prepping and doing nothing else. Screen bucket. This includes all of the social media, uh, not, for, not for your growth personally, okay? This is like TV, Netflix, okay? Your sleep bucket. Record your time sleeping and then your me bucket. Exercising, reading, personal development. What do you do for yourself? So, how much time do you spend at work? That's usually gonna be about 80% of your time. Family bucket, okay? Should be another large percentage of your time. Your leisure bucket, another large percentage of your time, and then I have three buckets like eating and screen time and sleeping that are obviously um, cohorts of how you would wanna spend your time. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to, for one straight week every year, you go back to that note sheet and I want you to log every single hour of every single day for seven days. Every single hour of every single day for seven days. And what I want you to do at the end of those seven days is I want you to go back and I want you to quantify three questions. How much time did I waste on things that I didn't care about? How much time do I have to give, to get back from one bucket that doesn't serve me to add to a bucket that serves me. And finally, what I want you to ask is, can I sleep faster? Because most of the time what you're gonna find is there's two buckets. There's that screen time bucket and then there's that sleeping bucket. I'm a huge proponent of recovery and sleep. I'm the fitness guy, of course I'm of course I'm looking at my philosophy of life through the lens of fitness. But do you need nine hours? Do you need 10 hours? Do you need 11 hours? Do you need 12 hours? I mean, do the math. I do the math in the book. It's something like, if you take and scale out for 40 years sleeping 12 hours versus six hours, you almost get 10 years back. 10 years. Now I'm not saying necessarily that six is the best for everyone. It's the best for me. It's how I thrive, it's where I feel fulfilled. I'm not saying that it is for you, 
but it's certainly not 12. So you'll figure out how you can sleep faster at the very little, at the very least to get that time back to apply then to your workout. This is why my number one piece of advice for those that say, hey Devin, I know time serves me and I don't serve time, but how can I make time work for me? How can I do more in the day? The answer is nine times out of 10 is get up earlier. Get up earlier, own your day. Deirdre, I hope that helped you. That's all I really needed to say is get up earlier and own your day. But I wanted to give you some context in terms of an exercise that you could do and you could carry forward in your life that every year you can go back and you can, an you can analyze your time versus your priorities with this exercise and you can ultimately reallocate your time every year. That way life doesn't happen to you, it happens for you. Guys, that is it for Ask Devin Anything today. Thank you for hanging with me. Don't forget to flex on that subscribe button. And if you are watching this on a video, I'm pretty sure we got this hoodie out now and this forest green hoodie is uh, one of my favorite. It does really good, really good job here. Look guys, we're like even starting to brand all the little things. Can you guys believe that I started slanging t-shirts out of my trunk of my car in like 2012? And look at us now, custom cut and sew, making all the stuff that you guys look fly in, feel good in, look good, play good, right? That was my baseball rule that continues to be my fitness rule. Guys, thank you for being here. Gals, you are awesome. Two claps on two. We'll talk to you very soon. Two claps on two, one, two.